Thank you. And Premier, I'm hoping at some point you're going to give us an idea of exactly where these deferrals are, because the I think that the question of what happens with protests is going to depend on exactly how much land is being set aside. But beyond that, um, you said we have allowed the title holders on their lands, and I'm wondering what your decision means today for the rest of the province where Indigenous nations wish to exercise their sovereignty over resource development on their lands. Well, we unanimously passed the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples in our legislature. It's called the Declaration Act, and we are implementing that. Free, prior, and informed consent doesn't just mean I don't want things to happen. It also means I want things to happen. And that certainty on the land base across the province, I think, will be advantageous to industry, to investment, and most importantly, to communities and to workers. With respect to the maps, the order was just passed in Cabinet today. Uh, those orders will come out. The maps will be abundantly clear. It's uh, in total 2,000 hectares of old growth. I think it's an accumulation of a bit more than 2,000 when you add in the second growth that's contained within those areas. Uh, but those will be made available, I'm sure, uh, shortly after I finish talking to you today, if not uh, as I'm talking to you. Justine, do you have a follow-up? I do, thank you. Uh, Premier, it took your government just a couple of days to accept this plan that was, I think, tabled formally with you on Monday. There are other First Nations who have requested old growth logging deferrals. I'm wondering if you plan to also swiftly recognize their right to determine the parameters of logging in their territories, or do they need to see these kind of mass arrests and conflicts before they get that kind of response time? Well, we're going to respond as quickly as we can to requests uh, from Indigenous communities, requests from industry. Uh, there's a whole host of stakeholders, as you know full well, Justine. Uh, we responded uh, to the uh, requests from the Pachidat. Uh, we've been working on this for some time, as I say, going back to September when we uh, adopted all of the recommendations in the gourlay merkel report. Uh, we said we were going to consult with title holders and defer more areas of the province. Uh, a technical briefing wasn't available today because the minister is in uh, budget estimates. Uh, her team is with her. Uh, but the information that you're looking for with respect to maps will be made available to you as quickly as I can. Uh, but this is, this is a positive day for not just uh, the Pachidat, the Huayat, and the Dididat, uh, but it's a, a good day for British Columbia because we are embarking on the journey to transform forestry. This is in everyone's interest. It's in the interest of those majestic forests and the biodiversity that depends on it. It's in the interest of industry because they can have certainty. And of course, it's in the interest of communities because we're going to attach forests to communities, not to uh, shareholders. Next question is from Richard Zussman, Global News. So, Premier, do you anticipate, Justine alluded to protests, do you anticipate that this deferral will end the ongoing protests at Ferry Creek? I'm hopeful that those who have taken to the, the roads of uh, Southern Vancouver Island will understand that this process is not one that can happen overnight. I know that uh, people have been passionate about forests for as long as I've been walking on this earth, and I've been in Southern Vancouver Island for most of that time. I've visited the Walbrand. I've visited the Big Cedar at Chiwats. I've been in majestic forests. I understand the importance of preserving these areas. But I also understand that you can't turn on a dime when you're talking about an industry that has been the foundation of BC's economy. I know the majority of British Columbians understand this is a long process. I'm hopeful more will join that majority view that we can preserve these forests as we've done today with Ferry Creek and with the Central Wall Brand. But we have to work together with everybody, not just uh, the loudest voice, but with everybody. Hi, Premier. Is, is there any cost associated with this, either to government or in compensation to Teal Jones that you know of in making your decision today and any other um, ramifications in terms of the potential financial or, or job or, or impacts that might come with this? Well, I, I know that the job impacts are modest uh, in this area. Uh, it is a non-compensable uh, deferral, which is uh, what the forest minister can do under the Act. Uh, but over time, there will, will be costs to uh, moving in this direction. But those are going to be uh, dollars well spent to ensure that we can distribute tenures in a more effective way to get more jobs out of the land base, to make sure that we're focusing on adding more value. You've heard me say this, Rob, uh, many, many times before. I'll continue to say it. We are on a path that uh, BC has not been on ever 
we're changing the way we do business on the land and that is hard work and it's going to take people cooperating and listening to each other as we go forward and the foundation of that however is the declaration on the rights of indigenous peoples and that was a result of rooms full of case law that made it abundantly clear that rights and title exist in British Columbia. The best way to manage that and create certainty is to work together, and that's what we're doing. Follow up, Rob? Uh, thanks, yeah. I'm just looking at the map and the zones that are identified and trying to sort of compare them to what the protesters have in their maps and their zones. And I guess to build on Richard's question, what would you say to people who are, um, you know, standing there, uh, fighting a larger fight for the protection of old growth that may not be resolved today with this map and these two zones A and B and the kind of areas that you, you've laid out. Well, I listened to uh, members in the legislature talk about this as the last stand. Uh, there are no others of it more greater importance than, than this. I, I disagree with that. There are majestic forests all across British Columbia. They're not all massively large cedar trees. There are uh, unique forests in the interior that need protection as well. They may not be as gigantic as the, the giants we see here in the island and on the coast, but the forests of British Columbia are diverse. The forests of British Columbia, they keep biodiversity where it needs to be. We're going to focus on that. Uh, there are going to be people who will say, I'm fairly confident, not good enough, and, and I anticipate that. But I also know that most British Columbians understand and recognize that the types of changes we're talking about, and, I, and I, I can't lean into that hard enough. There have been generations of discussions going back well before uh, Clackwit, going into the 1980s, into the 1970s, quite frankly, where people have been demanding change on the land base. We're delivering that change, but we can't do it overnight. Uh, Commissioner Merkel's been pretty clear on that. He did the report. I'll remind people that um, if they not, have they've not read the Gourlay Merkel report, they should. If they have not fully absorbed the recommendations that we have embraced, they should, because the primary recommendation is to work with title holders, as we have with the Pachidat, the Dididat, and the Huayat, to come up to a compromise that meets their needs in the long term, as well as the needs of these majestic forests. Uh, uh, the people, the caretakers of these lands for millennia, do not want to see them despoiled. They want to manage them as they have for centuries, and I think it's appropriate that we let them do that. Next question is from Greg Rasmussen, CBC. Uh, Premier, you, you know, as you just touched on, people have been talking about this since the 1970s, and we hear a lot of the same language from government, from uh, the protest side, from uh, First Nations. Do you have a date end date in mind for all this? And you know, because people are saying that the end game here is the the halt of old growth logging in British Columbia. It's a finite resource on the island. They say 90% plus has been logged. What's the what year will old growth logging end in British Columbia? We're going to follow the roadmap that was laid out by uh, Gourlay and Merkel. Uh, we've embraced the recommendations. It was a thoughtful report. It was lauded at the time by stakeholders across the piece, whether they from, be from industry, from the environmental movement. Uh, I believe that's an appropriate roadmap. It was hard, hard to put it together, and it's going to be hard to implement it. But if we focus on it, industry, workers, communities, environmental organizations, we can get there. I'm not going to put a date on it. That's a recipe for failure. I want success, and I believe success rests on the road that we travel together. Indigenous people, workers, environmentalists, communities, ind industry investors to make sure we can get this right. There is a bright future for forestry if we focus on adding more value, not just liquidating our forests and waiting for something else to replace it. I think this is the way forward, as do the Pachidat, the Dididat, and the Huayat. Greg, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, I guess one other question is the impact on the company here. Um, have you had any discussions with them about the impact either on jobs or I know I know the, the deferral process is a long one, but there's an, there, do you expect any immediate impact in terms of jobs in the Cowichan, Lake Cowichan area? I don't believe the impact will be significant. Uh, the Minister of Forests will probably be getting those questions right now uh, in the legislature as she debates her budget estimates. Uh, but I can say that uh, the, the uh, current deferrals are not compensable, but over time they will be. And that's part and parcel of our intentions paper, going back to uh, the building blocks that we've been putting in place since we were sworn in as a government back in 2017. We've been trying to put in place the framework for the changes that people want to see. 
and I believe we've done a pretty good job of putting in place uh, the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. I think we've done a pretty good job of making sure that, that the tenure holders understand the expectations from the people who own the resources, that being the people of British Columbia, and also understanding that we need to make sure that workers can continue to support their families wherever they may live. I believe the, the elements are there and I'm confident that if we all focus and work together, we can get to the end of the day where we have majestic forests for generations to come. We have people that can work on the land base, whether they be indigenous or non-indigenous, to create wealth and opportunity so that our, our province can prosper. That's the end game, that's our objective. And I believe the foundation pieces are there. There'll be legislation to come to implement the intentions paper. Discussions are underway, not just with the uh, tenure holder in this area, but right across the piece. But tenure was disrupted and turned upside down in 2004 by the former BC Liberal government. Uh, we've been trying to play catch up, quite frankly, since then. And that's, uh, that's why it's taken us four years to get to this place. There's two areas there that are basically part of a two year moratorium, the Wall Brown and the Ferry Creek area. But that doesn't mean that all uh, logging is gonna be halted in that general region, does it? Because, and the reason I ask is that the press release that the, the, the Didat and Tachidat and Hawaii put out a few days ago did suggest that, that some logging will continue. Can you just clarify that? Sure. Uh, all three nations have logging interests. Uh, all three nations have second growth uh, in their territory uh, that they'll continue to harvest. But the areas uh, of specific concern uh, to the, uh, the commissioners, uh, whether it be uh, Commissioner Gourlay, Commissioner Merkel, were uh, the Central Wall Brand and Ferry Creek. Uh, those uh, deferrals have been requested by the title holders and we've deferred old growth logging in those territories. Uh, there will be logging taking place in southern Vancouver Island and that's why uh, the job impacts are not as significant as uh, they would be otherwise because there are areas that have been harvested once, sometimes twice, and that'll continue. But those decisions are going to be made uh, based on the, the rules of engagement with the, with the province as well as the, the needs and desires of the title holders.